begins our second passage of scripture comes to us from the gospel according to St. Matthew. The 11th chapter beginning to read at the 28th verse. Listen for God's word. Come to me all who are struggling hard and carry heavy loads and I will give you rest. Put on my yoke and learn from me. I am gentle and humble and you will find rest for yourselves. God's holy word. There's a saying among clergy that in any given day, in any congregation, one third of the congregation are going through a crisis. Another third is coming out of a crisis, and the other third is about to go into a crisis. If you're not in a crisis now, chances are one is heading in your direction. And we are a people who are exhausted. We are exhausted We are filled with anxiety, and we are fearful for what the future holds for us. For we are struggling under loads that are too heavy for us to bear by ourselves, and facing storms that we were never meant to face alone. We are a people who show upon our own face and in our eyes that we have grown tired and that we are exhausted. And what we require now is the stimulus that is available to us in the person of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ offers an invitation this morning, come to me, learn from me, and find rest in me. Jesus Christ is offering this as a gift. It is not earned. It is the fruit of a relationship with Jesus Christ. It is not something that is the fruit of our labor. It is a gift that is an immediate gift, but the discovery of the richness of that gift occurs over time as we live into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Just as we live into a relationship with a good friend or with our spouse, discoveries continue to present themselves over a period of time. I saw a cartoon some years ago, perhaps you saw a similar cartoon, of an older couple who were standing together. The husband was distracted by something. The wife was looking at a younger couple who were engaged in a kiss. And the older woman said to her husband, who wasn't paying attention anyway, why don't we kiss like that anymore? But he did hear, and he answered, I told you once that I love you. If I change my mind, I will let you know. But it's a tragic answer, isn't it? Sometimes we think that all we need to do is to say to someone that I love you. And that is enough. And yet true love is one that is explored. One that is searched deeply and experienced over time. I have been married to my wife for nearly 35 years and I continue to make rich discoveries some discoveries I don't care to make just this past week. Again, 34 and a half years of marriage. Just this week, she showed me a picture of her boyfriend before she met me. I had never seen this picture until this week. But the point is, is that as you live into a relationship with someone, you continue to learn of them. And you continue to explore ways in which you can add joy to them add value to that relationship that makes the relationship even richer. We understand that with friends and we understand it with our spouses, but oftentimes we don't understand it with Jesus Christ. We believe that if we say that we believe in Jesus Christ and sign the membership form of a church, we're done. But Jesus says, come to me first and then learn from me. What Jesus Christ is asking that we do is to pay attention to Christ as we pay attention to our friends and to our spouses. To go deep into relationship where we learn what Jesus Christ taught and then we reorient our life to be pleasing to what Christ desires of us. And as we do so, we find rest in Jesus Christ. Come to me, learn from me, and you will find rest. You will not face the storms of life by yourself. You will not carry the heavy burdens of life all alone. My strength will be sufficient for you. 
The Presbyterian pastor, author, and teacher Eugene Peterson once said these words, and I want you to hear them clearly. If you are too busy to read, you're too busy. Let me repeat that. If you are too busy to read, you are too busy. I want to give a fresh spin on that and say that if you are too busy to spend time with Jesus Christ each day reading a little bit of scripture and perhaps a helpful devotional, you're too busy. And what you will find is that you're running on your own strength without the strength of Christ. And eventually, you will become depleted. We find replenishment for facing the challenges of each day when we spend a long time with Jesus Christ, reading the scriptures, and perhaps reading a helpful devotional. The devotional that I prepared that is available to this congregation was written to take no more than five minutes of your day. I provide a small passage of scripture, a four-paragraph devotional, and a prayer. Do you know that some years ago when Volume 1 was published, it was published three years ago, an elder, an elder of this church said, Doug, it is a big ask that you're asking me to read this page for five minutes each day. There are 125 meditations, one per day, a brief passage of scripture, four paragraphs of a meditation and a prayer. I thought he was kidding and he was deadly serious. Big ask, Doug, to ask me to read five minutes of a devotional and spend time with Christ. I do know that this man is running on fumes and he simply doesn't know why. If you're too busy to spend time with Christ, you're too busy. And you will run on exhaustion. Writers cannot write from exhaustion. Musicians cannot perform well if they are depleted. And soldiers on the battlefield are always defeated if they do not receive the replenishment that comes from time off the battlefield restoring their strength. The loads that we must carry in life were never meant to be carried alone. Christ wants us to come to him, to learn of him and to rest in him so that his strength may come alongside our strength that we can face those challenges and not be exhausted. Jesus says, come to me, learn of me, rest in me. When Jesus Christ spoke those words, he was speaking out of the Hebrew faith and its traditions. And he was speaking to the Hebrew people. And so it is helpful for us to understand something of the tradition and the scriptures of the Hebrew people from which Jesus Christ was speaking. We have that captured for us in the pages of the Old Testament. So I'm asking you to remember the words I read earlier from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and our strength. In every case in the Old Testament, when God's name is mentioned, God, it is either qualified with the word eternal, eternal God, or eternal is assumed. And eternal is the arresting word. It is the arresting word of the Old Testament. Eternal. We often have limited the definition of eternal. The way we define eternal is, is that it goes out beyond us as far as the eye can see and then some. That is not incorrect, but it's incomplete. For in the Hebrew scriptures, eternal begins with the past. It asks us to look to the past and to remember how God was present with us in the storms of the past so that we can look into the future and anticipate that the same God of the past will be with us in tomorrow. So when we hear the scripture speak of the eternal God, we're asked to remember first. And as we remember that God has sustained us to this place in life now, 
we are restored and renewed that that God will stand with us as we face the challenges that await us in the future. Perhaps you have heard in the sermons that I've preached or in the study of the scriptures that you've done, the image of the under arms of Christ. The underarms of Christ. Or the arms of God that surround us and sustain us. We've all had the experience of hitting bottom, of, or at least what we think is bottom. You understand, of course, that bottom literally means bottom. Bottom, there is nothing below bottom. Bottom is bottom. It's as low as you go. Have you reached bottom? Have you reached the bottom of life because of something you did that you should not have done? Have you reached bottom because you didn't do what you should have done? Have you reached bottom because you're just purely exhausted and you didn't take the time to be renewed and restored? Have you burned out? Well, according to scriptures, you haven't hit bottom because underneath are their everlasting arms of God. Underneath what we think is bottom is the everlasting arms of God. God's arms are bottom. And they are below us to sustain us when we have nothing left. Perhaps you read some years ago, as I did, that uh, the U.S. government was testing a submarine and to test the submarine, it was sent out into the open seas and it was submerged rather deeply where it would remain most of the day. And after most of the day being submerged deeply in the oceans, it would come back up and make its way back to the harbor. After the submarine submerged, a terrible storm came over the sea. And it churned the sea. The winds tossed here and there until the storm moved on. After the submarine returned to harbor, he was asked, the captain, so what did your crew think about the storm? And the captain asked, what storm? We felt nothing. I learned something from reading that article, that there's a place in the ocean called the cushion of the sea. Have you heard of that? The cushion of the sea. You can go to a certain depth in the sea where whatever happens on the surface of the sea doesn't reach that depth. The surface may churn. It may turn around and whip around. It may be turbulent in every way, but it only goes so far before it stops. The cushion of the sea is that place where the water remains still regardless of the storms that turn and churn the sea above. The submarine had gone to the cushion of the sea and was unaffected by the storm above. Underneath are the everlasting arms of God. God's arms are the cushion of our life. Jesus has come to me. Learn of me. Because learning is the requisite for having a relationship that has meaning and depth and value. And you will find that you rest in the everlasting arms of God. And your strength is restored. Someone once told me of a prayer of a little girl who prayed, Dear God, take care of my daddy tonight and take care of my mommy tonight and Take care of my brother tonight and take care of my little sister tonight. But most of all, oh God, take care of yourself because if you don't, we're all sunk. Jesus Christ says that his arms are the cushion of life. And we get to that place as we live into relationship with Jesus Christ by learning from him. That is taking the time every day, even if it's five minutes, to read a portion of scripture, to read a meditation that's helpful, to offer a brief prayer so that we may be replenished for the challenges of the day. 
Eugene Peterson's absolutely right. If you're too busy to read, you're just too busy. And if you're too busy to spend time with Christ, you're too busy. And you will soon be depleted. But if you spend the time, you will come to the cushion of life. You will come to the everlasting arms of God. Do you doubt that? Do you believe that you have committed an offense that is so great that you've gone below the arms of Christ? Do you believe that you have worked so hard and become so depleted that you are now the bottom and there's nothing else there? I'm asking that you believe as I believe the witness of King David who committed adultery and then committed a murder to hide the adultery. And when he thought he had reached the depths of life, found underneath him the everlasting arms of God. I'm asking you to believe Peter, the apostle Peter, who one morning, one single morning, denied knowing Jesus Christ three times to save his own skin. And when he thought he had hit bottom, he landed on the cushion of life, the ever asking arms of God. Or what about Saul, whose name was changed to Paul, who tortured and killed hundreds of Christians. And when he thought his life could not get any lower, any worse, he found embracing him the everlasting arms of Jesus Christ, who changed his name to Paul and called him to become the missionary that he would become and responsible for two-thirds of our New Testament. Murder and adultery, denying Christ and murdering hundreds of Christians. Can you go lower than that? And each of these men found sustaining them at the bottom, the arms of God, offering them rest and renewal. If you're discouraged, by something that you've done in your life that you're ashamed of. Or you're simply exhausted fighting an illness or loving someone who's fighting an illness. Or just exhausted by life in general. Jesus Christ says, come to me. Learn of me. Meaning, pay attention to me regularly. And you will find rest. And it will be the disciples' rest. The rest that God has intended for all that God loves. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that in the word presented to us in the scriptures, we are reminded again and again of your love for us, your care for us, your encouragement to us, and of the everlasting arms that are available to us regardless of how low we may go. Forgive us when we are too busy to spend time with you. Help us to think clearly through our priorities and to find time in the morning or coffee during the day or in the evening time that we can just be still. Be still. And know that you are God. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, come upon every one of us and remain this day and all of our tomorrows. Amen.